a YouTube because her face, she said, was too big. Talking about you, Miss Tamara. I know this is what she got me on the thing. I'm like, what the hell do I got to be up here so close for? Why can't I be like a thumbnail? Ba -ba -ba boom. Well, the thing is, I don't make those. Vizzer does. And that's how y'all come out. And that's why I said for them to put all of us on one thing together. Because before it was just one person at a time. This way we're all on there. So Vizzer chooses what they're going to put out there with the whatever they say. So whatever you say, if they think it's worthy of putting it out there, they're going to put you out there. And how they make you, I, I can't change it. Unless you cover your face up or just stay in yeah, the background. Add, add stickers to it. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I can try. Go and find but sunglasses I, and stick on it. and um, yeah. You're very beautiful. Why would you not want it your face It has nothing seen? to do with it, Mother. See, I'm there. I don't care. It has nothing to do with it. It's the size. I had to tell Gary to take me off the group text, too. I don't want to be on it. We took care of it. <laughs> At least she is nicer about it than that other lady. <laughs> and I'll be like, Gary be texting somebody, and my phone will be going zoom, zoom, zoom 15 times. Apple, what you eating? I'm hungry. <laughs> she can't Let talk us see. Again. Let us see. She cooked supper tonight. What is it? Pork chops? Yep. Um, cal like a homemade calzone. Calzone? Cal yeah. Mm -hmm. What's Messed a calzone? Hold it over pizza. It's a pizza? Yeah. Yeah, hold it in half. Never heard of it. They're delicious. No, calzone sounds like cow gone. Take me away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I remember that commercial. Just like I remember that, where's the beef? Where's the beef? I used to love those Kroger, I mean, those uh, Folger com uh, commercials. You know, they were like a story that you had to keep watching to see what was going to happen. I forget I've got the wrong. What kind of head. story are you talking about? Folger's Coffee. Was that man in the last right? Huh? Or was that Maxwell House? Maybe it was Maxwell House. Good to the last drop. Maxwell it was that man and it was that man and woman, and they had like this love affair, but you didn't really know. You had to watch like six or seven commercials before they actually finished the story. It was kind of cool back then. Kind of like Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Mm hmm. Hey, why does my computer keep freezing up when I listen to the Sermon on the Mount? Too many windows open. Oh. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Tammy, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> how, how do we know Peter was a rich fisherman? Because he had a net income. Oh. <laughs> oh, on, hey, I, I thought that <laughs> was going to be the... Help me understand the first one you told me. You just went on to a second one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I couldn't. I didn't understand the first one either. Okay, why, why did the computer keep freezing during the Sermon on the Mount? Too many open windows. They're on the mountain. They're on the mountain. There is nothing. No windows. No nothing. Too many open windows. It's open air. Okay, so I'll get. I'll, I'll get one that's a little bit less complicated, okay? Can hey, someone play your cricket husband, noise? Your husband and your granddaughter didn't get it either, so. Can, yeah, someone, can someone play cricket noises for this? Who? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's I missed what that. I hear all night from my pond. <laughs> uh, Molly can't sleep if she hears anything. I never know where I'm going to find her in the house sleeping. I agree with her. I'll be right back. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> Why did Noah go fishing? Because he already had two of every kind. Oh. <laughs> I figured it was because he was a hooker. <laughs> he could have done that too. I don't know. No, maybe that was his wife. <laughs> well, 
it may be us four no more us five it doesn't matter we're going to pray and ask god to bless us and we're going to get started because uh i got questions boy do i have questions and i wanted it to where y'all could you two gentlemen could get in there and, and grab a hold of the horns of the altar and answer them wasn't just going to be on revelation four uh oh <laughs> we could start with the questions if you want to you know but i think we need to finish up revelation four because uh john what was the first thing he said he saw an open door an open door was he on the mount the sermon on the mount with all the open windows no he didn't get to go there <laughs> this was many many years later when he wrote the book of revelation and remember now especially in right now we're going to be getting into symbolism uh symbolics so that a lot of people want to teach it literally it's not it is mostly symbolic if you can take it literally take it but it's going to be symbolic so father we love you we praise you and we just thank you for this wonderful day we thank you for the fellowship of this group we thank you that we know that we are having your word to go forth that every person that sees it on youtube twitter any of those social medias that they will hear the word of god and that you will draw those people to you by your holy spirit i thank you for the anointing of this service tonight i thank you for everything we do is for a blessing unto you, for we love you so much. And we thank you. And everybody said, Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. You know, God is so good. And uh, one thing we will learn about in Revelation 4 is God rules from the throne room. He doesn't have to get up and go to the kitchen like Apple just did. He doesn't have to get up and do anything. He rules from the throne room. And I love that. So uh, we're not in five. And I keep forgetting I got the wrong mouse in my hand. Uh, Mrs. Luke is coming audio. She's been studying, so y'all better watch out. Who can tell me what Ichabod means? Headless horseman? Something of pain <laughs> has brought me sorrow or brought me pain. Because... Uh, uh, there's a text in Ezekiel or somewhere in there where it says Ichabod. When the Babylonian attack came, Ichabod means the glory of the Lord has departed from the temple. So you don't want to name your child Ichabod because that means the glory of the Lord has departed. That's what one of uh, Eli's daughter-in-laws named her child was Ichabod because her husband died. Her brother-in-law died. Her father-in-law died. They lost the war and the ark was taken by the Philistines. And so she said, Ichabod, when she gave birth to her baby, Ichabod, because the glory of the Lord had departed. So Ichabod's not a good name to have. But we're going to look at some things here in uh, Revelation 4. Uh, somebody made a comment and Apple told me about it. Uh, he was really upset about the uh, stone that I said that the first stone of the aura around the throne was a diamond. Well, he said, no, it should be a jasper. Well, they mistranslated it because a jasper is more of a dark green stone and it can't be clear and see through. You can't see through it. It's not clear. They mistranslated it. So I hope he's listening because I'm going to try to answer his question because when you look at that, most gemologists will tell you that it had to be a diamond. Because Jasper is a very dark, dark color. So chapters one, three covered the church period, which is a larger part. But um, who's talking to me? Right now. Okay. Let's see if we shower by now. Okay. Is it cooking now? I just put it on. How long does it need to stay? I put it on high. Molly must have just got home or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, we read uh, to like verses five, but we're going to start with Revelation one and read all of Revelation four. And then we're going to start with five next week. And when he gets the scroll. It, 
if I have time, I'll make a scroll where you'll see the seven seals that's on there, what it looks like, and what you'll be real surprised when you find out what's on that scroll. A lot of people don't know what's on that scroll. Well, how about but, this? How about everybody's homework is everybody make a scroll on what they think it looks like and use whatever you think you need, fingernail polish, wax, whatever, a book, binder, whatever. You make a scroll and we'll, everybody will show theirs next Thursday. Homework. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> I think she's very smart. How many of y'all agree with that? No, it's like it's <laughs> no, no homework. Raise your hand. No homework. No <laughs> homework. It's a majority. I can see it already. It's a majority. I don't have I don't have like six hands, so I'm just gonna All right, let's see how creative everybody is. Gary. Captain, it doesn't matter how hard we try. Doesn't matter how hard we try, Captain. We're out buy these little finger things they put on there and they look like their little hands. So each finger is like five fingers. So you could buy those to put on your hands, Apple. That way you'd have all those hands. Okay. I don't understand what the homework was. Make a scroll. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Make a scroll. What kind? Like what, what kind of context on well, it? We're gonna be reading. In, we're gonna be reading in the book where Jesus opens a scroll. So you figure out what you think a scroll looks like, and then next Thursday we'll do show and tell. Okay, I can. I am so down for that. Okay, Revelation 5 is for next week, but we're going to finish up because, see, Revelation 4 and 5 should have been the very same one. But the interpreters did this for the convenience of people reading it. But we're going to start reading with Revelation 4, verse 1. And Captain or Golden, one of you guys, grab it. On 4, in other words? Yes, Revelation 4. You read half and then give Gary half or Kaylee take half or somebody. Hello, Brenda. Just tell me when to read and I'll read. Whenever they stop, grab it. Good, good, good to see you, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Miss you. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and someone was sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone, and a sardis in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and open upon the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the th throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Is that the end of that one? No, we're and at then seven. It then it goes over to five, right? No, we're at seven. No. Yes, yeah, seven. We're at first seven. You want me to read? Yes, yeah. please. All right. Find it. Okay. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second was like an ox, and the third had a face like a man, and the fourth was a f like a flying eagle. Each of our four living creatures had six wings and was covered with the eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. 
art this focuses on the connection between the book of ezekiel and the four creatures around the throne the cherubim who are guardians of god's glory the cherubim are last mentioned in ezekiel 10 you might want to write these down so you we won't have to look them up but you can in your private time as they arrive in Jerusalem to escort God's glory out of the temple in advance, the coming of the Babylonian attack. And that's when that happened with Eli and with his sons and with her having the baby. And she named that child Ichabod. And Ezekiel eleven seventeen says, Therefore say thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people, assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered and give you the land of Israel. And they shall come hither, and they shall take away all the detestable things and all the abominations thereof from thence. And will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. They may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But before that can happen, many things have got to take place on earth and in heaven, including much wrath, that we're not appointed under wrath. I was talking to someone, letting them know that we go through tribulation all the time. Paul said in this world, we will have tribulation and we will overcome because of Jesus and what he did. But the great tribulation, that is the last part of uh, uh, the day of the Lord, the several we talked about last week. But we're not appointed under wrath. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you've accepted him, you will not go through the tribulation, the great tribulation, because we are not appointed under wrath. So we're going to go next now to the beginning of the wrath of God on earth during the final seven years of this age when we start in uh, verse 5 or chapter 5. But we're not going into that this week because we're going to open up what's on that scroll you will be surprised and we'll go back and look at the ones that the talking about the uh gentleman i'm trying to find where i had that i had it marked so we could talk about the uh cherubim what they look like uh let's see where is that <laughs> in the presence of the anointing the anointing should always bring he says, I believe these four creatures called the living creatures, they are the spirits of anointing. And every time the angel of the Lord are used, they are implementing, baptizing, delivering, anointing something that God is doing through the people in the earth. Number 12 is a number of God's people at work in the earth. It's a governmental number. I always remember that. There was 12 tribes. There was 12 apostles of, the, uh, of Jesus. That turned out to be the apostles. They were disciples. They were apostles. 12, 12, 24. The angels have a purpose. They're messengers. They are the spirits of anointing. And if you go to Isaiah 11, it will tell you about what the spirit of the anointings will do. And when you plug that in with what these four types are, what the anointing should do, it should always be doing something. If you've got the anointing on your life, you've got to have the intelligence of a man to understand, strength of an ox to overcome, and bring servitude to long suffering, and like the vision of an eagle. That's what we should be able to do. Jesus was anointed, and what he did, the Bible says we're supposed to do that and even greater works. Greater works than these, Jesus said, that we were supposed to do. He was anointed, and we should be the same way as Jesus was. Now, the first ring or aura around the throne, I have told you it's a diamond. One gentleman wanted to say because of a jasper. This is symbolic, but you can't look through a jasper. And it was in a mistranslation. And there were several uh, books that I went through to look to see, and I'm not the only one. It comes out to be a diamond, something that's clear that you can see. The first thing that comes in is the holiness and purity of God. That's the nature of God. God's got integrity. If God says something, you're going to believe it because he's going to do it. He says, my word will not come back to me void. It will perform what I send it to do. You need to train your spirit that if you say you're going to do something, train your spirit that it knows that you're going to do it. 
so that when you want your prayers answered and you pray the word of God, you will believe it and it will happen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you pray and believe and speak it, it will happen. You can tell that mountain, go and move. But if you're double-minded and you say, I'll meet you tomorrow for coffee, Tammy, at 10 o'clock, and I don't show up till 11 o'clock, my spirit isn't going to believe a word I say. Because if I cannot believe what I'm going to say, I've got to train my spirit to believe what my mouth is saying. Y'all see what I'm saying? Jesus was the most focused man that ever walked the face of this earth. Whatever he said, it happened. So you have to be careful what you say when you are uh, training your spirit. There was a man that was up there uh, training himself to have his spirit to obey. And he says, you know, well, I'm going to preach tonight. And I think I'll just go ahead and preach this other guy's time too. He was just joking. But he had trained his spirit so much to believe what he said that when he was up there preaching and he had his watch time so the alarm would go off at one hour. Well, he kept preaching, just preaching and preaching. And he looked and his clock didn't say nothing. And all of a sudden he looked, his watch was broken. He had trained his spirit so much that guess what he did? He not only preached his time, but he preached the other guy's time too. His spirit believed what he said so much. He did exactly what he said. But you have to train yourself to do that. You have to train yourself in the little things. Despise not the small beginnings. If you say you're going to do something with all you're doing, do it. Now, sometimes things happen and you can't do it and you have to make allowances for that. But nine times out of ten, if you say you're going to do something, even if you take the short end of the stick, you need to do it. Train your spirit. Train it. So that is the first aura is a diamond because it's an aura, it's a hot, and it's purity, and God is pure, and he's holy. Do you remember the gentleman when they were moving the ark, and it was on the cart, and they did move it the way it was supposed to, and it kind of toddled, and he reached out to touch it. I think his name was Uzzy, and he reached out to touch the cart to steady it, and God don't need us to steady his, his, his self. He reached out to steady the cart, and when he did, boom, he was struck dead. It was an overt action. God wasn't mad at him. No, he wasn't supposed to touch the ark. That's why they had those poles the way they did, so they could carry it. They had a certain way to move that ark. Well, the oxen stumbled, and he reached out to steady it, and when he did, dead. It was an overt action. Just like if Gary decided he wanted to go stick a spoon in an electrical socket, that electricity is not mad at him, but if it's a 220, it's going to kill him probably. Going to fry his bottom. But it wasn't mad. It was overt action. Same way with gravity. Gravity has a law. You get up on top of the house and you say, well, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump. And you jump. Well, that splatter is going to kill you if it's a real tall building. And gravity's not mad at you. It's a law. That's the way it is that we are supposed to be training ourselves to be like Jesus. He said he came to be a sample son for us. He came to draw us back to be just like God. When God made Adam, the angels looked and saw them both. And they said that you could see them standing there. And you couldn't tell the difference between God and Adam until the fall. Because his spirit was made just like his daddy. He looked just like his daddy. He acted like his daddy. How do you think he knew to name all the animals what he named them? He didn't go to college or anywhere to learn how to name animals. But he did because he was created in God's image until the fall. And then when that happened, then we live in this fallen world. So now we have to be renewed by training ourselves with the word of God. It's the word of God that you need to get inside of you. You need to eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every day you need to eat it in the morning. You need to eat it at noon and you need to eat it at night and thank God for it. And you need to say it. When God was ready for the light to be, what did he do? He said, there you go. Hmm. No, he said, light be. And what happened? There was light. There was light. 
And we are supposed to be training ourselves to be just like our daddy, Abba Father. Because of Jesus Christ, he came to bring back Eden back to the earth. He said, whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And whatever is bound in heaven is bound on earth. We are to look at what Jesus does and do the best of our understanding. God's not going to hold you responsible for what you don't understand. But when understanding comes, revelation comes. And when revelation comes, light comes. He said, the word is a light unto my path. And he will have that light to come into you and like, whoa, I've been reading that all my life. I didn't know it meant that. And all of a sudden, the word of God speaks to you and you begin to do it. and You see things happening. Do you know, how do you think what money got into that fish's mouth when Jesus told Peter to go fishing to pay for their taxes? It came out of the supernatural. We're supposed to live naturally by the super we're supposed to be supernatural people and that should be naturally to us because we are formed in the image of god when you become a new creation but we're babies and we have to be fed milk of the word but you've got to take that bottle like your calf you've got to force feed sometimes get that bottle in you and force feed on the word until you're strong enough to have the meat of the word and then when you walk in the meat of the word you can walk around and know that you know that you know it's going to happen if i say i'm going to have my bills all paid off by the end of this year i don't have any bills but i'm talking about if i did well, I have insurance and things like that that you have to pay, but I'm talking about as far as notes and stuff. But if I had them, I would take those bills and put them on my table and I would say, in the name of Jesus, I am not paying you. You're going to be gone now. I am not going to because I am God's child. Be gone. But you see, I have to believe my word or it's not going to happen. I'll just be speaking into the wind. You've got to believe what you say. That's why you must train your spirit. Train your spirit. Just try it. Start reading the word, eating the word. Start little and see what you can do. It's so awesome when the Lord showed that to me and I spoke about this house here. Within a year, it was going to be paid off. And exactly within a year, this house was paid totally off. We owe nobody except taxes and things like that. The house is paid off. I got tired of $5,000 a month going out and rent our house payment. And when God showed me the things, you've got to believe the prophet and you will be established and you will prosper. Well, I believed my prophet and I said what I said and it happened. What? Are you talking to baby? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. So. We know that God's integrity, his word, if he said he's going to do something, it's going to happen. The same way with us, we can't just get people off our back and just say anything. We've got to learn to train our spirits. And then the next stone was Sardius, which is a blood red stone. All right, if we just walked into the presence of God, we'd be fried like a potato chip. Just like that guy that steadied out that uh, ark, trying to help God out, overt action of died if we walked into the presence of god without being covered or insulated by the blood you know what would happen to us Die. we would be dead Die. yeah that's why he's got him insulated by the blood the blood of jesus the blood of jesus because we go into the throne boldly through the blood isn't that what the bible says come boldly to the throne of God through the blood of Jesus. That's how we get in there is through the blood. You've got to remember there is so much power in the blood. When you don't know what to do, you need to cry the blood of Jesus. Mercy, 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 the blood. That mercy seat. He told Mary, don't touch me yet when he arose from the dead. He had not gone and poured out his blood upon the true mercy seat in heaven. And he said, don't touch me. I've not ascended to the Father yet. I remember when I heard that read when I was younger, I thought, boy, that was so rude. She was just so excited to see him. She just wanted to hug you. 
but he could not let her touch him because he had not ascended to the Father yet. And when you get older and you begin to understand the Word of God, then you can see why he said that. He had to go into the real temple in heaven and pour out his blood on that mercy seat. Remember, once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would take the blood and he would put it there for all the children of Israel to see if they could get their sins covered. They weren't really washed away. They were just pushed back for another year. But when Jesus came, he said he washed it away once and for all. Our sins have been covered once and for all. So now we know that when Jesus, when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. I'm a little Jesus. You're a little Jesus. We're a little Christ. Christo is the anointing. When I was a little kid, I like I said, I always thought he was <coughs> Jesus. That was his last name. No, that's the anointing. And when we get Jesus in us, the hope of glory, we're the anointing too. We have the anointing of God. And the anointing has got to do something. In your life, it's got to perform. You've got to place a demand on that anointing. If God tells you to do something in your spirit, do it. Don't say, Oh, I'll do it later. Oh, uh, maybe it's just my mind. Say, Do it. If you feel like God spoke to you, do it. See what will happen. See if God won't perform his word. He loves to perform. Did y'all know that? God loves to perform his word. He said, my word will not return back to me void. But it's got to be to people that really believe. People that really believe his word. And I want so much of the impartation of the word of God to get into <coughs> you. God's job becomes such powerful witnesses of God on this planet. They say, where did you learn that? How come your life is working and my life isn't? My life is nothing but a big bag full of cow poop. Well, it's like this. I learned in the word of God what God said I could have and what I could do. And I began to do what the word of God said. And God began to show me and he began to do. It's God that does the work. Jesus told him, he said, I'm not doing the work. It's the father. The same way with us. It's the father that does the work through us. But he has to have us to cooperate. I'm in partnership with him. He can't do anything on earth without men. Did you know that? He gave that job to us, to man. Jesus came as a man. He gave that job to us, and we are supposed to be taking dominion. We're supposed to be subduing. We're supposed to be creating and multiplying. And we need to get before him and ask him, Oh, Father God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to do so that I can bless other people? He doesn't bless you so you can get fat and blow up with all the blessings. Oh, he don't mind you having nice things, but he blesses you so you can be a blesser to other people. He said, we're to be the lender, not the borrower. He said, we're to be the head and not the tail. That's what you are. You've got to believe that. You've got to talk to yourself. If you need to make three by five cards and put it all around your house and eat the word of God every day of whatever scripture you find, let the word of God speak to you. Because everything you need for life is in the word of God. But your spirit, it's going to come out of your spirit. That's where it's going to come out. And it comes out by the words we speak. So the blood is the second aura around the throne. That's a Sardian stone. And then the third one is a rainbow. It says emerald green, but it's a rainbow. And where is it first talked about as a rainbow in the Bible? Who is he talking to? Noah. 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 <laughs> Remember when he got through, he said, I won't do this again. He was so sad. For the earth and everything that happened, he said, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky so that every time I see that, I will not destroy the earth this way again. That bow was put there for God. Did you know that? Have you ever had to tie something around your finger to remind yourself of something? God put the rainbow in the sky. Read the, read the scriptures. Read the book of Genesis about that and see what it says. He put that bow there for him. And every time he looks at it, or every time we look at it, we know what God is saying. It's a covenant 
Covenant is the strongest form of agreement that you can make. That's why marriage is so important. That's why marriage is such a holy union. It's a covenant between a man and a woman. And it's not to be broken. It is not to be abused. It is supposed to be honored. God speaks covenant talk. We're in covenant with one another in this Bible study. We're in covenant together at the church. We're in covenant together. God is a covenant God. He made covenant with Abraham. He even cut the pieces they did and they walked through the peace. Jesus came or God came in the theology and walked through those halves with Abraham. And he made a covenant with him. And we are in a covenant with God through Jesus Christ. Jesus cut the new covenant. Remember that we're in a new covenant. We're not under the law. We're delivered from the law. Jesus came to get rid of that. And he came to put us under a new covenant. So the third one is an aura of a rainbow. And then the next one is... Uh, I don't have that right in front of me. So tell me what the next one is. We talked about the rainbow. Because I've got my notes here about covenant. And I'm not going to get into all the covenants. Because God filters his judgments. Which is ignited by his holiness through his covenants. I always remember that. He's got it there where he can say. He can protect us and make sure that we're covered. So the fourth one then, Aura, around the throne, is a circle of living ones. Oh, oh, oh. The four living creatures. That's the other circle. I didn't have my scriptures opened at that place. I thought somebody would have that. It had thunder and lightnings. That's not the message. A lot of people will hear thunder and they'll take off running, but they don't have the message. They don't wait to hear what God's word says, and they just go running. You got to have the message. You got to know what God is saying. And the fourth circle around the throne after the covenant is a circle of living beings. Now, the four living ones that is described are cherubims, which is the most powerful angels. And if you look at the tops he applied, they had a face of a what? A lion, a man, an eagle, and a lamb. No, a calf. That, yeah, they had the face of a man, which represents the intelligence of a man. Lion, the strength of a lion. Judah is Jesus. Jesus is from the line of the tribe of Judah. The ox, servitude of an ox. An ox is a, a animal of burden of beast. They have oxen out there plowing with, pulling things. It's a burden of beast, servitude. We're supposed to be servants. He said, anybody that wishes to be great, you got to be servant of all. If we had a foot washing, are you going to let somebody wash your feet? Or are you going to be like Peter? No, no, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus says, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you will have no part in me. He said, what I'm doing now, you don't understand, but later on you will. He wasn't teaching us foot washing. He was teaching us about the sacrifice of being a servant. We are to serve our brothers and sisters. We are to prefer each other over ourselves. If I've got only enough food for me to eat, it would be selfish of me to sit there and eat in front of you knowing you're hungry. I should give you my food. If you want to be great, you've got to be servant of all. That's what he said. Jesus was servant of all. When he got up those 12 men, he wrapped that towel around him and he began to fill that basin full of water. And he began, and Peter said, oh, no, you, you can't. And Jesus said, if you don't let me do it, you will have no part. Peter said, okay, then just wash me all over. He said, no, you don't need to be washed all over, Peter. You don't understand what I'm trying to teach you. We need to be spot washed, and that's by the blood. Every day we need to be spot washed. That's, I wrote a book about that about the daily sacrifice, about having ourselves washed by the blood. There's only two things in the Bible that will clean you. What are they? The blood, Water, blood and the blood. Water and blood, that's right. When Jesus was stuck in the side with the spear, what came out? Water, Water and blood. And blood. Mm -hmm. 
we were watching that movie again last night. That's a very good movie. Y'all should see it. It's a, a biblical movie, and it's pretty close to the truth, and it's really, really good. What's so, the name of it? Is it A.D., Charlie? I will get that name and text it to you. Thank you. It is very, very good, and um, The Chosen is good. I know a lot of people don't like The Chosen because it's put on by the Mormons. But, you know, it is really close to what the scripture says, and it is so anointed. You know, God can use anything. He can use the jawbone of an axe. Ox. Not an axe, but an ox. A jawbone to save whoever he wants. He can use anyone and anything. God is sovereign. He can do what he wants. And I don't care if they're the ones that are putting that out. I love The Chosen. It has such an anointing on it. That it makes me cry every time I watch it. And they bring it out into a place. We're waiting for season four to come out. But this movie has been out for some time. And I just happened to put it on last night. And it was so awesome. The man that had to tell them to stick Jesus. He didn't want to do that. But he had to follow what he was told by his boss, Pilate. And they stuck Jesus. And that's what happened. And that's what made me think of that. And Hitler used to try to find that spear because they say that whoever has that, that would have the sword of destiny. You would rule the whole world if you could find that spear. But I don't think God's going to let anybody find that, just like they'll never find the ark. No. The raiders of the lost ark, they're not going to find the ark. Do you know where the ark is? Can anybody That's guess? A museum. Where? where? They say it's in a museum. I looked no. at Google it the other day. The ark is really, the real ark is in heaven. That's where Jesus went to pour his blood out on the ark in heaven. They'll never find the ark because it's in heaven. I believe it was translated there when he went there to pour out the blood. The high priest doesn't pour it out because Jesus is the high priest now. And he poured it out once and for all, the Bible says. So that's why we can come before him and we can get saved now. But I've told my husband, I said, they're not going to find it. It's in heaven. They're not going to find it. There are certain things God's just not going to let them find or have access to. And I love him so very much. But these four, they had the face of a man, a lion, ox, and eagle. Now, what's the next R around there? I don't have that opened up. The fifth one, ring or aura, is a circle of 24 elders. 24 elders, meaning the old covenant and the new covenant. That's what that stands for because 12 is governmental, and they had the governmental in the Old Testament and governmental in the New Testament. That's 12, 12, 24 wow. elders. That's men that was leading us and teaching us and guiding us. And that's what the covenant represents. And three is the number of God. Four is the number of earth. Three times four is 12. God at work in the earth through people. Always remember that. God's not going to build a church anywhere that he doesn't use a man or a woman to build it. If God tells you to do something, do it. Because he will provide. Because if God guides, he provides. Now, a lot of times we go out there and say, well, God told me to do this, but you have to beg for money. Well, then I have to ask myself, did God really tell you to do it? Because if God told you to do it, there's going to be <coughs> the provisions. God always provides. I believe that with all my heart. And the sixth aura, ring or circle around the throne, describes as being many angels. We don't know exactly how many. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly. It's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Angels around the throne. The seventh circle of authority, if you will, is what God calls all other creatures. So that means all the people, all the animal kingdom, and all that lives. If you've had a dog or a special animal that died, it's going to be right around that throne. Praising God. Every creature, everything that hath breath, praises the Lord. A lot of people don't believe that animals go to heaven. I happen to think they do. 
And I believe here in the seventh circle, all other creatures, that means all the people, the animal kingdom, and all that lives, they're there in the seventh dimension around the throne. So the seventh circle of authority, if you will, is what God calls all other creatures. Now, as I shared one other time, Jesus is represented in this throne scene as the lamb slain. What does it say about him? The lamb slain when? From the foundation of the earth. Before the foundation of the world. That's when Jesus was slain. It wasn't that when he was there on the cross, he had already been slain. That's why I'm saying when you need something, it's already there. You just need to get in the word of God and find it and begin to believe it and confess it and you'll have it. God has provided everything for us for our life. He started from the end and goes back to the beginning. We've just not been taught correctly. I had to unlearn so much when I started teaching and doing things in the word of God because I was brought up in a real tight holiness, the assemblies of God. And my father didn't believe in makeup. He didn't believe in cutting hair. He didn't believe in wearing pants for women. I mean, we were tight. We couldn't go to the movies. We couldn't do nothing. I asked him, I said, Dad, what can we do? That's how my uh, my grandma was raised by my great-grandma. They were uh, Southern Baptists, I believe. Like, they, my grandma, she couldn't cut her hair. She could only wear skirts, things like that. She was probably Hair. UPC. What? She was probably UPC. I don't know. Well, that, Penn, that's you know, Pentecostal. Oh, okay. But yeah, that sounds familiar. I I just remember something about Southern Baptists, but I can but remember you, wrong. But you said great grandmother, so that puts her in an era where they wore long skirts and didn't cut their hair. So she probably could have been Southern Baptist and just of the old version. Yeah, that that I think so. Well, when we leave the throne room, we're going to be there, but then we're going to go into a new era next week when we look at the scroll. It is so exciting. When I found out about what was on that scroll, we had Bible study. That's where we found a church to get plugged into because we had tried every church in this town and couldn't find not one church that we could worship at in spirit and truth. So I was teaching up there in Charlie's Love Me Room, and I got to teach on about that, what he found, what that meant, that scroll. I got so excited. I just couldn't help. I was just so excited about teaching that. So I'm going to look forward to seeing what y'all think it is, what God tells you, and what we look and see what the Word of God says in chapter 5, because that's what we'll be talking to. We're going to move there and see that Jesus Christ is the only one worthy to open up that scroll. Matter of fact, John was weeping because there was nobody found worthy to open that scroll until somebody steps out. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Oh, I think it's just so exciting because when we look and see the plan of God, what he's got in store for us, he said, I have not seen, ear hath not heard the things he's got in store for us. People, you need to get excited about God. Those angels... And the creatures that cry, holy, holy, holy. I mean, every day God's got something good for us. Yes, we have bad times. Yes, we have good times. But we should every day be thankful that we've got God, that we can worship him still. We're in the land of the living. And while we're in the land of the living, we should praise him with everything we've got. And you may not be a loud person like me, and sometimes I'm not real loud. Sometimes I'm a quiet praiser. You are I'll just say. loud enough, Nana. It doesn't matter if you're not loud or if you are loud. You are you are yeah. loud enough, and, and you are the reason that I am walking the walk that I am. And I am grateful for that every day. And I thank God every day for getting me to that point. Well, I praise God that you saw the Christ in me, the hope of glory. Because I tell everybody, it's nothing that I do. Because if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't be a very nice person. Mm -hmm. But because mm -hmm. Jesus changed me, Jesus came into me and became my hope of glory. And he began to teach me things that I didn't even know was in the Bible. 
I had to unlearn so much that I was taught. So they used to call me a, a, a cow kicker, a shin kicker. I turn over idols because, you know, hey, people make doctrines and they'll make an idol out of it like a Bible. Oh, if I put a Bible on my coffee table, it's going to bless my house. Oh, it's not going to bless your house. If you don't get that word inside of you, it's just another book. Oh, you can't write in that. That's a holy script. I'm going to write in my Bible if I want to. I'm going to write down what God tells me or what I want to put in my Bible. I want to hear what God has to say. And if I've only got that to write in, I'm going to write in it. Not sacrilegious. No. I treat the word of God with reverence. I have a holy fear of God. Not a fear that he's going to squish me like a bug. I love him so much, I don't want to displease him. Do you know what sin is? Does anybody know what sin is? What is sin? Separation Somebody give me a definition. What? Separation from God? Separation Missing from God? Mark. Missing the mark. When you miss the mark of God, you've sinned. Everybody says, oh, smoking is, this is, that. No, those are just symptoms of things. Missing the mark of God, missing the mark of the high prize of calling of Christ Jesus. We need to reach forward like Paul said. He said, forget those things from behind you. Forget what used to happen. Forget that. Look towards the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I look forward to having a thousand Kaylee's right behind me standing for the Lord praising God. I want to see so many people praising God that they're so their lives were changed, not because of anything I did, but the Christ in me did something to touch them. That's what I want people to see Christ in me because I can be not very nice sometimes and I don't like that. And I have to go and ask people to forgive me because I don't like it because, you know, we're still in a fallen world and we're still humans. But I try the best I can to let the Holy Spirit lead me and guide me. And to, I love it when I can go and say, Father, please forgive me. I hurt I hurt you and I hurt them. And then I go to that person and I ask them. And it's hard sometimes to swallow your own pride. But you got to do it. you got to do it. Because God said, if you can't forgive them, how do you expect me to forgive you? And how can you say you love me when you hate your brother? We are to love. I remember one time, and Tammy, I'm going to tell something on you. I can't help it. I'm going to. She told her daddy one time, she says, I might love you, but I sure don't like you. <laughs> I've said that to Jimmy a couple of times. Because he was pretty strict and tough and she just got so upset one time. She said, I might have to love you, but I sure don't like you. And of course, after she got up older, that all was seen differently and stuff. But he was, he was a very hard, strict man. My father was a very hard, strict man. I grew up under that. But I don't like that. I don't want, I don't think you have to do children that way. I think children can be taught different ways, but we all got our own way of raising our children. But I pray that God give us the wisdom to do what pleases him. Does anybody have any questions before we go into the questions? What's up, buddy? What's your question? To me, when you were talking about you know, getting a mindset to uh, receive, you know, a mindset to live a certain way. But I mean, like, I can't sit here and say, oh, I'm going to, I am praying for a million dollars to be in my mailbox. It's not going to happen that way. God's not going to put a million dollars in my mailbox. The odds are very slim. I have to live by certain principles, financial principles that he wants me to live by for that to happen. I ask for guidance. Well, okay. in, in the Bible, he tells us how to live financially, how to w live with our money, to be the uh, lender, not the borrower. And um, but the American good. way has everybody set up to fail. Hey, borrow and pay later. Da, 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 da. So our well, system is borrow and don't pay. Hey, if you don't want your baby, kill it. If you don't want to pay your debt, just borrow it. Um, our system is set up very satanically and the ways of God are totally different. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. Learn what God says. And what I was talking about on that, and I'm glad you brought that so we can clear it up, is because if God wanted to drop a million dollars in your mailbox, he could because he's sovereign. But you've got to be living the way that he wants you to live before he's going to do something like that. Do you think that if he gave you a million dollars and you're not living for him, he wouldn't do that because you would destroy yourself. You would destroy yourself. I would not, love the opportunity to destroy myself. <laughs> oh, God, you know what she means. <laughs> yeah, give me a shot to try. When, when y'all well, like a shot to try? A million dollars? I'll try. I, I do get know my feet that can't be faithful <laughs> a little. He's not going to give you much. He taught that to me years ago when I didn't want to do very much house cleaning when I was real young, had a lot of little kids. He said, you know, you don't like where you're at, change what you're doing. Start taking care of this and then I'll give you more. But until you take care of what you got, you're not getting no more. And I begin to change and I begin to change. He said, we're supposed to go from glory to glory to glory. We learn precept by precept. You got to get in the word of God. The word changes you. The word changes you. He's not going to give you something that's not in the word. And he's not going to give you something that will destroy you. If you're not ready for it, it'd be like your little baby boy, Jimmy. You're not going to give him a machine gun tonight because he wants it. Yeah. Would you give a machine gun tonight? No. No. He would destroy he, himself and everybody else. He's he would ready. love that, but no. <laughs> the same way it is with God and us. He's our heavenly father. He's not going to give us something that will destroy us. Mm -hmm. so, I'm glad you brought that up, Tammy. So are we ready, Jimmy, on the... He said yes. Oh, we're ready. Okay. Can you have, Mama? Okay. Do you know what they call Samson when he loses his hair? What? The balls he above. <laughs> you know like the the beelzebub he's a beelzebub he's bald okay i just thought i'd throw out a, a comment because nobody else is telling jokes tonight it seems like but i love to tell my jokes what do you call wait what do you call uh the cross between an elephant and a rhino I forgot. Elephino. <laughs> well, Elephino either. <laughs> we we were watching a show called New Amsterdam, and it's like one of the a medical show. It's in a hospital, and uh, one, the main guy said that, and we wrote it down so that we could say it during Bible study. <laughs> okay, question number one. One second, Anna. One second. The code is R. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Suspense, okay. suspense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Apple's getting in position now. Okay, what is the code? The code is R W P M. M as in master. Okay, one more time. Say the code. R W P M. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't start without me. I gotta get my notes. <laughs> <clears throat> Apple said, don't start without her. She's got to go get her notes. <laughs> yeah, she's running. She's running. <laughs> now you know how she answers the question. She writes down the notes. <laughs> she has no access to the question. She's still running. <laughs> right now, I'm only throwing uh, Kaylee and Apple as join. Shay, where are you? I see you. What Jay is it called again? 
buzzer uh, something crowd, crowd, crowd buzzer, buzzer. Crowd buzzer. Okay. Come on, Shay. You're not that old. Shay. I was helping D make dinner, and so I'm kind of uh, in and out. Shay. C C G dot buzz. Okay, the game code R W P M. R W P N M. Not N. Oh. M. And then when you join, hit buzz so I know you're in here. Okay. I'll set it before the first question. Okay. I'm in. Can you list everybody to make sure we're all in, Jimmy? All right. Right now I have Apple, Kaylee. Uh, I'm assuming you, Tammy, is Dirty Girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's not me. That's Tammy. Because no. I like dirt. She likes dirt with the cows. Dirty Girl. I, I don't have... <laughs> Charlie yeah, I'm for you. yeah, I'm not playing. Go. Okay. How, how do you get dirty girl out of wine? I said I like to play in dirt, so therefore I'm a dirty girl. Oh, Got cows. Oh, okay. Well, cows. Oh, okay. That's automatic dirt. <laughs> okay. I'm not repeating anything. That's right, Dad Gimmit. Hey, Mom. I, I was told <laughs> what? So... Only in America do we do multiple choice. In the other countries where people are smarter than Americans, they just have to answer it. So why don't you try not doing a multiple choice and just letting people no, answer the thing? No, no, no. They don't even know what they're learning. They want multiple choice. Come on, That's harden right. it up on these people. You tell them, Tammy. Fill in the blank. That's right. Be fill dirty in the girl. Blank. Be quiet. Yeah. Be, be quiet. Gary, what were y'all C students? Yeah, <laughs> Until C high school, student. I was pretty good. Make all A's. Okay, okay. Apple. I'll try two. Multiple I'll try two with no multiple choice. Okay, One thing, thank you. Gary, are you, are you joining? When are you going to No, I'm it? having a phone issue. Okay. <laughs> but he said next week he'll be there. His phone is going to be fixed and he'll be ready. Yes. I told him, I said, can you raise your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> How many elders were seated around the throne in Revelation 4? No, that wasn't multiple choice. Kaylee. 24. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What? What? I don't need it. Uh, I don't you see we're smarter than that. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? No. Nah, Depends on the day. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. What are the elders wearing on their heads in Revelation? Apple. Crowns. Crowns of gold. What creatures are described as surrounding the throne in Revelation 4? Oh, it's is that one multiple choice or no? Damn it. Well, Danny, I think you you're going to do you, multiple choice. Were you going to do multiple choice, Mom? You said you were going to do two non, and you did two yeah, non. I was, I was fixing to do multiple choice. Okay. okay. Reset That's us, it. Jimmy. It's reset. reset. But did anybody have that answer? Wait. Yeah, yeah I, I did. What was it? Uh, um, well, hold on. Tammy was first. Oh, but a lion, a man, a calf. I don't know the other one. And then a man and, and an eagle. Oh, an eagle. There we go. Eagle. We should not uh, get points. It was living creatures. Uh, <laughs> were those the living creatures? No. <laughs> don't you it. You <laughs> okay, you ready? Is this going to be multiple choice? Yes. Okay. How, how many wings do the creatures have in Revelation? Oh, Two, yeah, those. four, six, eight. Daily. Six. six. No. What? what? Apple. Wait, what's she saying? She said six. Don't they have six? I thought they had six. 
Um, I have to ask. What's the what's the answer? Revelation four eight. Somebody read that. Uh, it is it's each sick. of the four living creatures had six wings. Yeah, they had six wings. And, and covered, covered with the eyes the all around, the even the under the its wings. I was right. Okay, so I always have two that are <laughs> trick questions, and I usually have a mark. That's the trick question. You got it right. <laughs> you repeated. Now there's another trick question. You're going to come up with it. Are you ready? Yep. yep. What do the living creatures continually proclaim in Revelation? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Glory to the Lamb who was slain. Blessed are the merciful. Repent and be baptized. Apple, you were too fast. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Yep, that's it. I was gonna holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And tell me, why didn't you buzz in? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did I? I might have. <laughs> I'm never fast enough. <laughs> I think you never I will be if you don't practice. I'm sitting right on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> what is described as proceeding from the throne in Revelation 4? Lightnings and thunder, river of fire, rainbow, voices and thundering. Kaylee. Lightning, Lightning and thunder. thunder. Hey, take away the multiple choice again, Mom. Okay. You want to read Revelation 4 or 5? Was, Was that right? right? Read Revelation verse 5. Uh, from uh, from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. There are seven spirits of God. My computer just died. Mm -mm. We forgot to plug it back up, Jim. So I was right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what she's going to probably tell you is... It said lightning and thunder, peal of thunder. Uh, yeah, it has the rumbling with voices. It's voices, yeah. Yeah, it's the voices. It's thunder. voices and thunder. But I don't, I don't understand then. Because it says, because it says lightnings and thunderings and voices. Mine doesn't say that. Okay, the the rumbling part is the voices. How do you know? How do you know? From the throne came flashing or flashes of lightning, rumblings, and pure of thunder. So lightning and thunder would be the answer of the one. Hey Kaylee, you're echoing really, really bad. Her and Jimmy need to spread apart. What happens is the different translations is where we're getting this mixed up. Yeah, I have uh She's got one translation, somebody else has a Translation. But when you say that the vo uh, the thundering and the lightning are the voices, how do you how do we know that? No, I how, how do we know that just thunder, lightning, and voices? It doesn't say well, voices in mine. In the King James, that's, it says that's the, way the translation came out. The one that I used. Okay, <clears throat> so we will just put that as an X in because yeah. there's hers was like mine. Jimmy has something to say. Real quick, uh, in mine it says, "In the th out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices." So it says all. Three. In mine's like Jimmy's, and yeah. and and. All right, and what we were looking for was with the voices, voices. Well, that that that's all there. You ready? Huh? Ready. Yeah, we ready. I'm sorry, you know, life's not fair, but anyway, it's voices and thundering, yeah, and you could throw lightning in, too, also. Well, it was wasn't... like, I was two-thirds, right? Yeah, you were. <laughs> Can I get two-thirds of a point? No. <laughs> <laughs> the decision of the ready? judge is in final. <laughs> what do the elders do in Revelation 4, 10, 11? They dance around the throne. They cast their crowns before the throne. They sing a new song. They offer incense. Apple. They cast their crowns. They cast their crowns. Yes, ma'am. 
She got it. When I do it right on chain, stop talking. I don't get it. So I have to be over there. I guess we're all going to have to start using the same translation or I tell you which translation I'm using so that we don't get miscommunicated. So I don't want anybody to get their feelings hurt or feel like they're being cheated about anything. Oh, Not at all. Oh, I feel cheated. Me and Kevin um, cheated out of that one because it was thunder and lightnings. And <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. We should both get a point for that one. All right. Gary and Captain, what do y'all say? I mean, middle thunder language is than that. What? You say what? I mean, middle language the rest of the night now. All right, Gary, what do you say? I say it's thunder and lightning. Mine had the same thing. Yeah, yeah so that means I get a point. But I, Tammy should get a point, too. No, I, yeah, didn't, I, I didn't push the button. It's a oh. <laughs> Apple had voices, <laughs> correct answer. Okay, I, I didn't have that. But well, last week you asked us that question, and you said that. So I knew that you were talking about that but ours all say thunders and lightnings and voices <laughs> okay it has it all there okay they may even have dancing girls next time i don't know we'll see what happens the rumbling part is the the voice is, is, oh my god i forgot i'm muted it's loud and booming <laughs> okay are we ready yes ready hey, Okay. Try to get that out. <laughs> uh, which book of the Old Testament do we find the Ten Commandments? Leviticus, oh, Exodus, Numbers, or Deuteronomy? Tammy, no, oh, this one. Exodus. Yes, ma'am. I told you I was going to swap it up so some people have more chance instead we're of just out of all four. Already now. Uh, who was the first king of Israel? David, Solomon, Saul, Joshua. Really? Solomon? Ha, wrong. Oh, um, he was looking for Saul. his donkeys. Yes, it was Saul. He was looking for his donkeys when the prophet found him. Good job, Which Old Testament book contains the story of David and Goliath? First Samuel, Second Samuel, Second Kings, or First Kings? I have no Apple. idea. First Samuel. First Samuel. Apple got it. Good job, Apple. Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> my, I, if if I would have gotten chosen, my guess would have been right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the New Testament. In which New Testament book do we find the Sermon on the Mount? Remember the windows? Oh no. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Daily. Matthew? Yep. Okay, cool. Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell when you're not sure. Uh, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who baptized Jesus in the Jordan? John the Baptist? John on the Isle of Patmos? Peter? Paul? Or Andrew? Shay, the only one that didn't go before the the question was the well, you didn't well, five, you didn't five answers. You normally yeah, we, do four. And we don't know if she's doing a, a single answer or multiple choice. She hesitates. We have no idea anymore. Okay, uh, but the point is, hey, the, the point is, what's happening is some of y'all are trying to time it. As soon as she says the last word, you're punching the button. She tripped you up because she put five answers. She did. So yeah, okay, Gary, you made me forget my answer, Gary. You, you yeah. said, oh, you said sure, but, I know Gary. but I didn't get tripped up over five answers. I got tripped over when she hesitated right. for 3.27 seconds before she started with the answer. I'm like, okay, maybe it's more, just guess. So okay. you me. had said she's, Paul. She's a seasoned <laughs> human. Give her a break. <laughs> yeah. I think it's funny to see these cat fights. I love it. I think it's. <laughs> I can just see people when they see it on visitors like we're what? not gonna <laughs> take it. All right, tell us. Oh, is it Paul? It's Shane. Who? Is it Paul? Okay. Who baptized Jesus in I the know, George? I know who it is. I know the answer. Well, <laughs> I'm buzzing and I can't get in. Am I wrong? It's after Shane. Yeah, it's you're wrong, Shane. Well, well, my gonna die. I know the answer. <laughs> Who went after Shay? Tammy. John the Baptist. What did you say, Tammy? John the Baptist. Yep. There. 
What did she say? John the John Baptist. Baptist. Yes, Good that night. was that was Jesus's <laughs> cousin. By uh, six months. One de Baptiste. Uh, which he's, he's ready now. Which disciple famously doubted Jesus' resurrection until he saw with his own eyes? Peter, James, Thomas, Andrew. Tammy. Really? Yeah. And I buzzed right as soon as she said the question, Thomas. You got it. Dad My namesake. <laughs> that's right little tommy, little tommy. <laughs> and which new testament book do we find the story of the prodigal son matthew mark luke or john which one does it be pick it b b wants to pick it <laughs> i'm gonna guess mark no thank you which one does it be luke 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 that's it, Luke. Okay. Good luck. Right, now, I'm, I'm going back up to four and see if we can get into some more fights. <laughs> <laughs> what is the color of the rainbow around the throne in Revelation 4? Red, green, blue, like an emerald. Daily. Like an emerald. Yep. Uh, Got it. Oh, <laughs> Apple's phone hesitated. <laughs> How are the elders described in Revelation 4 4 as powerful warriors, humble servants, as crowned and seated, as standing in awe? Apple. Crowned and seated. Mm -hmm. I don't want to what is the appearance of the sea of glass before the throne in Revelation 4, 6? Dark and turbulent, calm and serene, boiling and bubbling, or frozen and solid? Apple. I'll go the second one. Serene and calm. Serene and calm. That's exactly right. I think Apple is doing something to get her to, her to always be the first one. I think she's cheating. <laughs> no, she's so not cheating. Did we get serene and calm because we have to know the definition of tranquility or <laughs> crystal? How do we get serene and calm? Well, that's how it is because it's if you see something smooth as glass, is it going to be rumbling and roaring? Come on, use your brain. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love my daughter. <laughs> okay. All right. Huh. Ready for this one? No. In which book of the Old Testament does the story of creation appear? Proverbs, Psalms, Genesis, Exodus. Apple. Genesis. Genesis. How many creatures are described as surrounding the throne in Revelation 4, 6, 8? 3, 4, 6, 7. Haley. 4. 4. I heard your little boy say "fo." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he pays attention. He knew that was "fo." It was right. Okay, let's see. I want to throw in, but here. Oh no! Yeah, in which New Testament book do we find the story of the Good Samaritan? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or none of the above? Oh, well, you're just gonna have to like count me out on this one. Apple. I'm gonna say. It was Apple. It's Apple. She counted herself she said, out. She said John, but it's not John. Then Kaylee. <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> One of them has it. <laughs> okay. It's Luke, and none of the above was five. I was wondering if anybody was gonna catch it. Nobody caught it. <laughs> Kaylee caught no, it. I, I caught it. I thought I was going to get counted out. because I, <laughs> I should get a point for counting it. No. <laughs> you got it. It was Luke. <laughs> but <laughs> I just threw that in there. Just for the heck of it. So okay. Apple got that one? No, I didn't get it. Nobody um, got it. Nobody got, got it. it. I got Kaylee it. Kaylee got it. Kaylee got it? Mm -hmm. It's Luke. I'm she didn't confused. say Luke. I'm confused. 
Me too. <laughs> I'm on the Hi. same page, Hi. Nana. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> okay. Who were the first witnesses to the empty tomb of Jesus? Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, Peter and John, Martha and Mary, James and John. Apple. Martha and Mary. No. Okay. Kaylee. Peter and John. I didn't know. Just one of them, Mary. Tammy. <laughs> Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. You what? got it. So those were two different answers. Different. I thought yeah. those were two different answers. It was answers. the first answer she gave. Very first it's one I gave. Very, like, but Mary, it sounded like they were it's not, so she said Mary Magdalene, the and Mary. other Mary. She didn't say and the other Mary, so confused me. <laughs> it, it, it was two people that went. I said the <laughs> I love to see y'all get all boiled up. I love that. <laughs> We're Who was a back. We're not going to take it. <laughs> Who was a Roman governor who sentenced Jesus to crucifixion? Herod, Pilate, Caesar, or De Niro? Apple. I okay, I was kind of sketchy. <laughs> yeah, she said Pilates. Wait a second. No, 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 no. <laughs> she said Pilate, Pilates, Pilate. <clears throat> what did Jesus use to feed the multitude of 5,000 people? Five loaves of bread and two fishes, seven loaves of bread and three fishes, ten loaves of bread and five fishes, or two loaves of bread and one fish? Apple. How? Isn't it five loaves of bread and two fish? Five loaves and two fishes. Got it. I think this is rigged. Yeah, it, no, She's I know looking it. Looking over her shoulder. There's, there's no way. <laughs> I am, I am pressing my button. Room. I think you're saying it's okay. I'm going to make a recording when we're doing this, so y'all can see what she's hey, doing and where I'm at. Webcam and just no, I know she's in the in the computer room, and you're in your bedroom. I know that. Oh, y'all are together. <laughs> oh, never mind. Yeah, because okay, yeah, it's rigged. She's cheating. The answer is actually fish and chips. <laughs> that. Hey, can y'all see it? Well, who was the tax collector that climbed a tree to see Jesus? Zacchaeus, Matthew, Simon, or Bartimaeus? Apple. Was a wee little man, a and a wee little, little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree, the savior for to see. <laughs> and, and who was it? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Oh, okay, Zacchaeus. <laughs> I didn't hear the answer. <laughs> who was it? No, oh, where's <laughs> No, like they pronounce it Zacchaeus, and I would say Zacchaeus, but you know, Zacchaeus. Hey, little, we, little we get the point. Zacchaeus. Well, it's like German for Zacchaeus. When we were taught the song when I was growing up, it wasn't Zacchaeus climbed the tree. It was, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. Which disciple did Jesus ask to follow him while they were working as fishermen? Peter and Andrew, James and John, Philip, Thomas. Apple. Peter and Andrew. Peter and Andrew. Yeah, it, that is right. And I should have got it because my button was pressed at the perfect time. Don't do any more <laughs> multiple choice, Mom. Let's see how I'm good not. Apple, let's see how good Apple is without it. I, I like that. I like that. I'm not going to do very good, but well, I like Kaylee, Kaylee, you can have all my points. We're going to okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Who preached the sermon on the day of Pentecost, leading to the conversion of thousands? Apple. Welcome to the world. Wasn't it Peter? Yes. Apple. She got it, Peter. I was going to say Peter. <laughs> Dad got it. Take that. Hey, you made me cuss on um, Bible study, so shut up, little girl. <laughs> uh, you know what? You've got to ask forgiveness before the sun goes down tomorrow night because you did this after the night so you got to have it. before the sun goes down tomorrow you got to get forgiveness Tammy I, I want I, I'm, I already missed the multiple choice oh, what about yes. wasn't a multiple choice what I, am I, I asking know. forgiveness for 
for cussing? That dirty name you said you called her? Oh, okay. oh, I didn't call her a dirty name. I said a dirty word. I said... Oh, a dirty word. Dang it. Oh, what? I didn't hear that. Dang it's not dirty. Yeah, I bet. Well, she, she didn't well, say dang it. the cleaned it. up was... version of the... Well, actual oh. word she said. The uh, dam around okay. my pond. <laughs> Okay. You just sacrifice. Hey, when I was growing up, confounded was a bad word. We got in trouble if we said confounded. I also heard that when you were growing up, butt was a bad word. Oh, uh, we couldn't say that at all. Yeah, I didn't know that. Jimmy told me fart, that. Okay. Fart. <laughs> My mother loves that, that word. Another one. Okay. We're coming down to the very last of the last. Please right, come come on, football choice. Please, I, I'm so close to winning, and if we don't, do, I, I need to win one. I'm always second place. Always second place to Apple. Pushy cheeks. Suspicious. <laughs> Who betrayed Jesus to the authorities for 30 pieces of silver? Tammy. 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 Judas Iscariot. You got it. I had a brain for it. Like, ah, hey, come on. I get your point, right? <laughs> <laughs> what did Jesus turn water into at the wedding at Cana? Well, can you repeat that? Nope. Tammy. Juan. Yep. You didn't hear it the first of the uh, thing that I can't repeat nothing. I was told I can't repeat it. She was back last year. Okay. Which Old Testament figure built the ark before the flood? Tammy. Dang it. No way. Noah. Who was the prophet swallowed by a great fish? Apple. Jonah. She got it. Last question. Oh, I also learned that Jonah was, there's actually two warnings in there. But... What right. did God provide for the Israelites to eat in the wilderness? Anyway. Manna. And an extra point for anybody can tell me what it means. Manna means, means, manna means food of the angels. <laughs> yeah, food of the angels. Apple said it's food of the angels, but that's not what it means. What does it mean? Oh. It's not food of the angels? What is it? I it, don't know. That. It is food of the angels. Uh, but when the Israelites got up, they no, didn't it, say. It provided by God? Uh, when, the angel, when the Israelites got up and they saw it, they didn't say, oh, look, there, there's food of the angels. They said, what is it? Oh. That's what Bread. manna means. No, manna means, what is it? It means what angel is? food cake. What I is it? I think Tammy should get, because she said it before I did, I think she should get a point, <coughs> at least. For I, well, I, didn't say what she, I didn't say what she said. I, said I know, cake. but it's close enough. Angel, uh, I said, oh, okay. So, Charlie, I'm giving my points to Kaylee. Did we beat Apple? <laughs> I told you. All right. You ready for the uh, final decision of the judges here? Yes. Apple's got 13. I don't care. Kaylee's got eight. Tammy, you've got seven. Boy, so 15? So I won. Yeah. We so won, Tammy. <laughs> Do y'all really think that's fair? Yeah. Yes. No. yes. Yes. There's no crowding up like that. Grandma, I wouldn't do that. Sorry, Kaylee. I tried. No, thank you, Tammy. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't uh, get stuck there, Kaylee. Uh, whoever, my points. Why can't I do what I want with them? It's my whoever, body. Whoever watched. Whoa, whoa, my body, huh? My body, who, my choice, my points. Why can't I give them? Do what I, I want. Won. I won. The decision of the judges is final. There is no who, wagering. Whoever sees this online, they're going to think that we've all had too much wine to drink at the wedding. My oh, yeah. Grape juice is so good. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Why is Grandma doing Taekwondo over there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate lady online who does Tai Chi. 
It's good. I for appreciate you. everyone. I want to learn it. Maybe they're even doing even if y'all did fighting. I want to learn fighting. Even though y'all did get a little hot under the collar a few times, uh, Gary, can you start providing fans for everybody so they can kind of? <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> Our theme song. <laughs> Did he just spit on all of us? <laughs> I'm not talking. I think, I think that I we should count this as... Oh. It's exploding. I think hey, we hey. should count this as a win for me one time because we all know I'm never going to beat Apple because she cheats. She does not cheat. I know, no, I know she doesn't, but... I won't, I'm just, I won't feel my strategy. Yeah, that, that's what I need to figure out. And I've tried many strategies. The only one that's worked is Tammy giving me her points. <laughs> <laughs> my body, my what? choice. I should be able what? to do my points what I want to. What? Now that sounds like somebody, this is my body. I get pregnant. If I want to get abortion, I can do it. This it's my exactly body. No, doing. no, no. I'm using no, that, no. I'm using what language. she did, <laughs> what she did is she had a baby and I adopted it. <laughs> I adopted her points. <laughs> More like you kidnapped them. Kaylee. Yeah. I asked you not to share the crack, okay? <laughs> no babies well, around I, here. I don't well, know. I, I did Apple that uh me and Tina told Apple that uh she was mine. I didn't want her. I gave it to Tina. Oh. And I tried to convince her because that. her eyes were blue and my eyes were blue, but um I don't remember that. <laughs> I just remember y'all saying I was adopted. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the favorite game of the prodigal son? Hide and seek, and he always comes back for more. <laughs> <laughs> Which Bible character is a great chef? Job, because he knows how to handle a lot of suffering in the kitchen. <laughs> how do we know God loves baseball? He hits a home run. Says right in the beginning of the Bible, uh, in the big beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning. And then at the at the last is in the inning. <laughs> the beginning <laughs> of. The <beginning. laughs> Why did Noah have to discipline the animals on the ark? Because there was two of everything. No, because they were acting naughty. Uh -huh. no. uh -huh. Like naughty, naughty. <laughs> okay. 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 The Sunday school teacher asked the kids to draw Christmas pictures. So she goes around looking at each one. And one of the little boys is drawing uh, a picture of four people on an airplane. So she asks, What is this? Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus on a flight to Egypt, it says. Well, who's the fourth? That's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> I like that old Pontius the Pilot. <laughs> hey, Charlie, that's Charlie's new nickname, Pontius. Hey, Pontius. <laughs> what did the grave say when he got stepped on in the Bible? Nothing. He just let out a little wine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which Bible character is a great musician? David, he knows all the right chords with his heart. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know one. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does a penguin build its house? It, it glues it together. Did <laughs> y'all get that? No. Yeah. It glues yeah. it together. It glues. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hate to say goodbye, but I got to go feed Harry. Yes, you take care I want to meet I I wanna beat Harry. Next time, everyone, y'all be blessed. In the name of Jesus, and I hope you had a good night tonight. I did. I loved it, even y'all getting hot under the collar. Yeah, it's <laughs> fun. I think our theme song needs to be, we're not going to take it. No, we ain't going to take it. I really think we need to take up a uh, special collection for Tammy and get her head examined. It's not right. No, I like her just the way she is. I do too. I love my daughter the way she is. I wouldn't change a hair on her head. If well, she doesn't her. have many of them to change. <laughs> I love it just like. <laughs> she Whatever. I love you. Every time I see you, I want to. I want to <laughs> shave my head off. 
I mean, my hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to grow it out. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a headless Kaylee <laughs> Shave my head off. Yeah, I want to shave my head. Y'all have, right, have a good night, people. Right. See y'all next week. Hope Love y'all. Bless, blessings to everybody. <laughs> Love you. Bye-bye, baby boy. I can't ever find out how to hit the record button, Apple. Huh? I can't ever. I, mean, I got the wrong one. No wonder. Did you accident? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm the only one still on. I guess I'll just keep on recording by myself because I keep getting the wrong mouse, mouse, mouse. I'll tell the jokes myself. You want me to tell you some jokes? I'll sing you a song. I'll sing a song. It's a long song. I'll sing you a song. It's when I saw. In the right hand of him who sat on the throne A book was written inside and on the back Sealed up with how many seals I love y'all